All of life is based on principles that you develop patterns to affirm the principle that you stand by. Now, I'm going to say that so you get it. All of life is based on principles. The principle of faith, the principle of truth, the principle of love covers a multitude of sin. Hello? Forgiveness is a great principle. How do you hear that? Forgiveness is a great principle. And, and we need to understand principle life, principle led life, principle lived life. Now, we base our lives on principles from God's Word, which I believe is the truth. The Bible says He is the truth. We develop the patterns that are like road maps that help us find our way on our destiny. The patterns, as you can see on the wall here, the patterns become like road maps, and they lead us to the next juncture, to the next city, to the next place in our journey in life. How many of you hear that? But you have to have the starting point, which is the principle of faith, or the principle of truth, or honesty, or some other aspect. How many of you here? Now, in that, we need to know that we're going to get a principle, build a pattern, so that we can go down the journey of the road of that principle. Right? Now, I read a quote the other day. If life isn't a test, God would have given us more instruction. If life isn't a test, God would have given us more instructions. And I thought, well, that's, that's good. I, I, I can guarantee you life is a test. And every day we're getting graded. How many of you know every day in the test of life you get graded? How would you do today? How did you do at the end of the day? The question becomes, how did you do? Did you pass or did you fail? Do you have to take the test again? How many of you know Israel was 40 years going on an 11-mile journey? Watch this. Israel was 40 years in the wilderness on a proven now 11-day journey. How many of you know, it seemed like to me they would find an old uh, Snickers wrapper or a, a, or a wore-out tennis shoe. I know there had to be some Levi's there. Now, in that process, 40 years, 11 days, every day of our life is a test. And God is taking us along the test, but he's grading us. Are you listening? And, and, and if you watch Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 and 10. Now, it says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. All right? How many of you hear that? I mean, you got to pay attention or your boat's going to drift away from the dock. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How many of you hear that? How will we... I'm talking about us here in this 2017. How will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation when they back then, they had angelic visitations on a regular basis. They had things manifesting that were causing them to know that God was present, like rain where it wasn't ever rained before, waters opening up, letting them pass through the Red Sea and the Jordan and so forth. And he says, how we, we, we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. How many of you know your salvation is great? Yes. Come on. Yes. How many of you hear me a lot of times say, uh, I enjoy my journey. Yes. I feel sorry for a lot of Christians who don't enjoy the journey. Yes. It's a good journey. Yes. And there's trials every day. I just told you, it's a test. Yes. But saints, in the test, I, I'd rather take the test, fail it, and retake it than not get in the classroom. I'm not going to be a dropout in Christianity. I'm not going to try to get my way, fake my way through. I don't want the teacher to just pass me and dumb down this thing. 
David said, I will not offer to the Lord that which I have not paid for. Now, he says, uh, neglect such a great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Uh, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. For he has not put the wor- world to come, he has not, he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. But one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you take care of him? As an angel speaking. You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Wow. You have put all things in subjection and under his feet For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus who who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death uh, for everyone. For it was fitting for him uh, for whom uh, are all... Things by whom all are all things in bringing many sons to that's us to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. The captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering. Jesus is the captain of our salvation. Have you hear that? Now, what is a man or what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. Now watch this. This is important. Go to James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. And he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. How many of you know we're all going to go through some trials? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. How do you get that? How do you say, Lord, thank you. I want to be complete, and I don't want to lack anything. 1 Peter 1, 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, who having not seen you love, though now you do not see him. Have you know this morning we were talking about we don't see him. Yet believing you rejoice with great uh, inexpressible And full of glory. How do you know we don't see him, but we feel and know he's here? Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Now, 1 Peter 4, and then verse 12 through 16. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. How many of you know, listen, the things that you go through, other people have gone through. You are not an original Hello, just because you got a bad day or bad hair don't mean is yours is original. Somebody has already been there. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, uh, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Uh, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. Have you hear that? But let none, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. Now he said, if you suffer in Jesus, that's one thing. But none of you should suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer. Wait a minute. I, I got categories. I don't know, I, I, I profile. 
When I see murderer, thief, and evildoers, I have in my mind a certain level of kind of person. But it says, or a busybody in other people's matter. Hmm. If God would choose to put that category with murderers, I think we better pay attention. Just a thought. Have you say, Lord, you're going to speak to us. Now, we need to look back to see our way forward. We're going to look at angels and their assignments to God, to man, and to perform God's word. Angels are a principle. Have you ever heard of principalities and powers? Angels are a principle. Are you still listening? Angels are a principle, and there is a pattern that they follow that will help us embrace the truth that angels are present constantly. Now, God sent angels as assignments to God, to man, and to perform God's word. Psalm 148, verse 2 and I, I, I want to use the NIV here. Okay? Psalm 148, verse 2. Now, first of all, this is to God. So we have to understand that angels are assigned to God. And so in verse 48, 148, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his heavenly host. How I many you know the angels stand before the throne and say, holy, holy, holy? Now, I'm going to blow your mind. Because I don't have the time today, but throughout scriptures, there's times of references of how many angels. When Jesus said he could call a legion, he said, I can call 12 legions, that's 80,000 angels. When, when Daniel it gets a revelation in the book of Daniel 9, he said, at the throne that I saw, he said, there were thousands upon thousands upon thousands times tens of thousands times 10,000. I mean, hear me. We need to change the concept uh, that we think we understand uh, what is going on in the celestial world outside of this world. There are angels by the millions and millions. Yeah. Have you here? Yeah. The population of angels, saints, is massive. I begin to try to count and it's moved into the millions. You can't count how many scriptures in different ways and different volumes talk about angelic beings ministering, number one, to God. Number two, angels assignment to people, especially to believers. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7 through 14. In Hebrews chapter 1, in speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. How do you hear that? But about the Son, he says, your throne of God, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Can you hear that? You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set above you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Thank you, Jesus, for the oil of joy. He also says, the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hand. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like garments. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool of, for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? Hold it there. How are you here? Angels were sent to minister to heirs of salvation. Now let me tell you something. Jesus said it this way. He said, 
my Father in heaven, the angels do always have the children before their face. Have you know that angels have been assigned to you since salvation? Angels have been assigned to you since salvation. Psalm 103, verse uh, 20. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Angels are the ones who are sent to perform God's word. Look, when God wants to speak to Daniel, he don't speak to Daniel. He sends an angel with the word. Gabriel comes and says, uh, I mean, Michael comes and says, I brought the word. The minute you prayed, I had to come through Persia. I had to come through the principality. I have the word. It's in my hand. This is UPS. God said, I got through the angels, the fallen ones. I got through the demonic spirits because I'm a sign to deliver the word. Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob left Bathsheba and he went toward Haran and he came to a certain place and stayed there overnight because the sun was set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and he lay down there to sleep. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood over and beside him and said, I am the Lord. So the angels were coming and going, and God showed up as well. And God, the God of Abraham, your father, forefather, and the God of Isaac, I will give to you and to your descendants the land on which you are lying. And your offspring shall be as countless as the dust of the sand of the ground. And you shall spread abroad to the west and the east and the north uh, and south. And by you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed and bless themselves. And behold, I am with you and will keep watch over you and care and uh, with care. Take notice of you wherever you may go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done all of which I have told you. The word came to where Jacob was, and all the fulfillment was going to be in that land. How many of you hear? When the word of the Lord comes, it comes to a specific land and a specific location, and it is not going to work over in another place. And Jacob awoke in, uh, from his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. How I do mean, you know he can be there and we don't even know he's there? He was afraid and said, how, how to be feared and reverenced is this place? There is none other than the house of God and this is the gateway of heaven. And Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone uh, he had put under his head and he set it up for a pillar of monument, the vision of his dream, and he poured oil on top it's, uh, in indication and he named the place Bethel, the house of God. But the name of the city was Luz at first. And then uh, Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way, then I go and will give me food to eat and clothing to wear so that I may come again to my father's house in peace then the Lord God shall be my God. And this stone which I have set up as a pillar monument shall be God's house, a sacred place to me and to all the increase of possessions and you give, that you give me, I will give a tenth to you. Jacob said, I, 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 I had a dream. I had a vision. God showed up. Angels were coming and going. What does it all mean? God was standing there. God was talking to him. Can you hear me today now? Watch this. Jacob was so blown away that the end of all of it was that his response was that he, what he saw, he gave tithes. He gave his substance to that which he couldn't see, but he saw in the spirit. How many of you here? If we would get in the spirit, we would understand why somebody will say, I love to give, and why somebody else will say, I'm going to see if I can cheat God out. 
Because those that would cheat God and not pay their tithes and give offerings, they have no awareness that God is right there. I shared it in the time of offering this morning. Jesus was watching the little woman give her might. You see, if we can excuse God from our atmosphere, we can live any way we want. We can conduct our immoral life, our, 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 our rude life. We can gossip and whisper and lie and steal and never be aware that God is even close and come to church and go, hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ, his unveiling of the divine mysteries. God gave it to him to disclose and make known to his bondservants certain things which must shortly and speedily come to pass in their entirety. And he sent and communicated it through his angel messenger, his bondservant John. Have you hear that? Now, he refers to uh, John as an angel because angel means messenger. That's what it means in the Greek language. The word angel means messenger. So angels are messengers. How many of you hear that? Now, every angel, every church has an angel assigned to it. Every, every, listen to me, every person has an angel assigned. Every child has an angel assigned. Every church has an angel assigned. Now, these are ranking angels, so some of the ones that are assigned to you are not the same rank as the one assigned to the church. Verse 10, look at this. I was in the Spirit, wrapped in His power on the third Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice like the calling of a war trumpet. Have you hear that? And then it says, saying, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and last. Write promptly what you see, your vision in a book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Samaria, to Pregnama, and to Thysia, Thysia, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Lacedicia. Uh, then I turned to see uh, whose voice, who it was, the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, look at this now. One like the Son of Man, clothed with a robe, which reached to his feet with a garment of gold about his breast. And he said this. Now he's talked about his hair, talked about his feet, talked about who it was. The Lord was standing there. So here's this revelation now. And he's talking about these seven churches. Go to verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell on my feet as if dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I'm the first and I'm the last. He was standing in front of Jesus. Can you hear that? And then if you go down all the way through and to verse 19, right there for the things you see, uh, what they are, and signify, and what is to take place hereafter. So if you go to chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, and so the angel messenger, the assembly church in Ephesus, right. Have you hear this now? Yeah. To the angel messenger, the assembly church in Ephesus. These are the words of him who holds the servant of the seven stars, which are the uh, messengers of the seven churches. Messengers there, seven stars are angels. In his right hand, who goes about among the seven golden lampstands, which are the seven churches. So the seven churches are the golden lampstands and the seven uh, angels there. That's a whole different thing now. It's talking about the, the seven churches and those are those that are standing in the golden lampstands, which is the church, and then the messengers uh, are there who are the angels. So you had seven angels, seven churches. So every church had an angel assigned to it. And we need to know that there's different kinds of angels the angel that's assigned to a child may not be a warring angel. But the angel that's assigned to a church is a warring angel. Now the angel that's assigned to a city is one bad dude. And when you get a hold of that, the angel that was sent in Daniel's day, to, in, in the Babylon and to Nebuchadnezzar's time, if you get that angel, you're talking about God sent the archangel Michael. So you can't get any higher than that. That's a heavy duty angel. Matthew 18, 10. Jesus said, see that you do not look down 
on one of these little ones. For I tell you, their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. So the angel that's over your child is seeing the face of the Father while it's a sign to protect your child. To speak to your child. To guide your child. You see, saints, we go about life because we don't understand the word. We go about life thinking we've been dropped here like a care package. The stork dropped us on the earth. And we're just here going, oh, my God, what are we doing? And God said, no, 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 no. I put you here. I have an assignment for you. I gave you gifts, which is assignment. I gave you assignment, and I sent your angel to be with you. Remember... We are looking at principles. Daniel 7, 10. In Daniel's vision, he saw thousands. I mentioned it a minute ago. Thousands upon tens of thousands and tens of thousands stood before God's throne. Revelation 5, 11. John said, and I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands upon tens of thousands. Ten times ten thousands. Psalm 68, verse 17. The chariots of God are myriads of thousands upon thousands. Saints, what would we do? You remember Elijah? He opened the eyes of his servant. And he saw there were so many angels encamped around them. He said, there are more for us than are against us. How many of you know there were tens of thousands attacking Elisha and the number of angels was more than what was attacking them? How many of you know, with that many angels, I love what Jesus said. He said, you know, if I wanted to, <clears throat> he said, I could just call on the legion, 12 legions, and I'd end this thing today. I'd bring 80,000 angels in, and it would be all over with. How many of you know, if 80,000 angels dropped in Washington, D.C., at the nation's capital, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What would be going on? The cry, chief screaming pigeon on top of the capital there. He would be spinning his head. Wow. Judges. Look at, look at, look at this. Judges 13 tells us the angel of the Lord visited Mona and his barren wife, telling them that she would bear a son and the angel gave them specific instructions that he was to be a Nazarite and raise up this boy named Samson. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15, Joshua encountered a commanding angel who tells him how to take Jericho. The angel came to him and said, look, here's what you're going to do. Seven times, you're going to shout. I mean, angels came and got engaged in the battle strategy. And here we are. We come to church and we worship as though God isn't even present. What was different with these people and what is different with many today who have a revelation understanding and they've learned that ladder is what God wants us to all have an open heaven and angels were coming and going. That means they were bringing words and going back up, giving a word to God. They were bringing a word and they were coming back with the answer and they were going back and forth. There was interaction between earth and heaven. How many of you say, God, let my prayer life begin to develop where there's an interaction between heaven and earth. I'm talking about interacting in all of our creation of understanding scriptures. When Jesus is born, the angels come to Mary and say, Woman, great favors upon you. And you're going to give birth. You're going to conceive and give birth to a son. And Jesus, the Messiah, is coming inside of you. And then when it was time for him to be born, the angels showed up on the side of a hill and told the shepherds, There's a baby born in a manger. Angels have been integrating back and forth in the culture of this world since creation. John 5, 2. And it says, now there is in Jerusalem a pool named the Sheep Gate. This pool is the, in the Hebrew is called Bethsaida, having five porches, all covers, colonnades, uh, and, and doorways. And in these lay a great number of sick folk, some blind, some crippled, and some paralyzed. 
shriveled up, waiting for the hum bubbling of the water. Oh, God. For the angel of the Lord went down as a, at appointed seasons into the pool and moved and stirred up the water. Can you hear this? Uh, whoever then first uh, after the stirring up of the water stepped in was cured of whatever disease uh, that which was afflicted them. Come on, have you hear that? Jesus is on the earth and angels are still healing people. How did the angels heal? Just stirred the water up and whoever got in the water first got healed. How do you hear this? How do you know angels have been assigned to protect, to heal, deliver God's word? They have been assigned on this earth, saints. Can you hear me today? Jesus was accompanied by angels his entire ministry. He even told Peter when he drew his sword to defend Jesus that he would command more than 12 legions. I've been saying that, Matthew 26. Now, let me look at this last piece. This is the last part. There's a guy named Lucifer. There's this angel named Lucifer. He's an archangel. He's called Light Bearer. He's called the Son of Morning. If you read Ezekiel 28, now read Ezekiel 28. And, and, and if, you, if you look at that, you'll see something real quick. Ezekiel 28 and, and verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the Son of Man, take up lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, You are the full measure, pattern of exactness, giving and finishing touch of all that constitutes completeness, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Let me tell you something, saints. This angel was probably the most spectacular angel in all of heaven. He was the full completeness of wisdom. And was perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. He was there. The garden of, uh, of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The Cornelia, Topaz, Jepez, and all the beryl and all the, all the different jewels there. Carbon, uh, carbuncle and emerald. And your settings and your sockets and engravings were wrought in gold. On the day that you were created, uh, they were prepared. Satan, Lucifer, we know him as Satan, but Lucifer carried all the tablets of all the worship was in him. You were the anointed cherub that covers, that means he has authority, with overshadowing wings and set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God. He was there covering the whole mountain of God with praise. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire like the paved work of gleaning sapphire stone upon which the God of Israel walked in Mount Sinai. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity and guilt were found in you. Oh boy. Still there? Through the abundance of your commerce, you were filled with lawlessness and violence. And you sin, therefore I cast you out as a profane thing from the mountain of God. And from the guardian cherub drove you out from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud and lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you bare before kings that they might gaze at you. You have profaned your sanctuaries by the, by the multitude of your iniquities and the enormity of your guilt. By the unrighteousness of your trade, therefore I have brought forth a fire from your midst. It has consumed you, and I have reduced you to the ashes from upon the earth in the sight of all who looked at you. All who knew you among the people are astonished and appalled at you and have come to, to a horrible end and shall never return to being. Never return to being. He's talking about Lucifer now. Look at verse 12 again. He was absolutely beautiful, perfected. Verse 13, he was musical. Verse 14, he had an anointing and he had covering. He was so powerful. Who wouldn't hire a guy like this? He's sharp, good looking, wise, charming, can administrate, teach, and lead worship. Oh, yeah. 
Here's a principle. Pride. Verse 15, iniquity was found in Lucifer. Verse 16, violence, profanity, and destruction. Verse 17, pride, corruption. Verse 18, defilement, a multitude of sin. Verse 13, he had too many I wills. Too many I wills. Verse 13, he had so many I will. I will ascend to the throne of God. I will be like the Most High. I will. Have you hear that? The fallen angel Lucifer fell on the basis, I never knew this before, he fell on the basis of perceived injury. A lie. Lucifer was aware of the coming of man. He walked in the hill of garden between the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He was there, the covering. He overheard God talking about his plan for man. And because he knew that man was coming, and, and, and Lucifer knew this. He knew that man was going to be God's greatest creation. What would man do for God that the angels couldn't do? Praise him more? Serve him better? Fill a need the angels couldn't fill? Would they, these angels, eventually be replaced? Perhaps Lucifer got his feelings hurt and felt unappreciated. Watch this. This is what goes on in the earth. Because it's the fall of Lucifer that is attaching itself to people. Listen to me. All of a sudden, we become constantly, everybody's offended by everything. Let's take down statues. We're offended. Let's do this. We're offended. We're offended over the offense. I'm offended that you're offended. This is what happened to Lucifer. You say, how do you know this? Watch. Lucifer gets his feelings hurt and felt unappreciated. Maybe he began to listen to the other angels telling him how beautiful and gifted and unique and wise he was. You must be something special, they said. Could it be that Lucifer started this whole thing by perceived injury? That man was going to replace him. You see, pride came in, it says, pride came in before the fall. So it came in because he looked and he saw man, you and I. And he said, oh my God, uh, God will hear man. God will honor man. And I will no longer be great. Wow. Something like this. God doesn't love us or need us anymore. Maybe he said that. We used to be important. But no longer. He goes, worry of us. If I was your Lord, I, the angels, he was saying to him, if I was your Lord, I would never let anything come between us. If I was God, you'd always be number one in my book. He didn't have a book. The principle is pride can make the greatest fall. Perceived injury will cause a person to believe a lie. If it worked on the greatest angel, Lucifer, can it work on us today? The pattern in Philippians tells us the antidote, tells us the solution. Can you hear this today? Philippians chapter 2, and I am done. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God. Did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity as, so as to assume the, gauze, the guise of a servant slave. And that he became like men and was born a human being. And after he had appeared in human form. He abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, because he stopped so low, stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely 
bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That in at the art of, in the, in that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every in heaven and earth and under the earth and every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus is Christ is Lord to glory to the glory of the Father. Jesus said this is the antidote. He said, humble yourself. And I want to tell you something. Angels are important. Angels have assignment. Angels are present with us today. They're here right now. And they're actually wanting to engage with us. They want to rejoice with us. They want to inter intercept the enemy's diabolic plans against us. They want to push back the darkness that wants to creep in on us. But we can't even acknowledge that God's present. How are we going to acknowledge that the lower angels are present? Stand your feet today. Say, Lord, thank you for your presence today. Thank you that you've dispatched an angel before me. Thank you that you put an angel to watch over my children. And their face, uh, the face of the angel is always before God who's looking out over your children. Uh, God says uh, he's here. He's present. Uh, he's omnipotently present uh, to change the course of history through a people that will say, God, uh, I don't want to be exalted. Uh, I don't want to be full of pride. Uh, I I'm not going to let my emotions uh, go around and get me injured and, and offended. But Lord, today, oh God, how could Lucifer have gotten so, so far away? So far away. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for this body. I pray for those who have so many agendas that are so important above you, God. Forgive us, O oh Lord. And God teach us that if we would see like Jacob the heavens opening, angels coming and going. God, if we would just see your Shekinah, your glory interfacing with us, interacting with us, that God, we would be so aware, so aware, your abiding presence.